So today I am, you know, when, when, when this paper range came out, I saw I'm partial, besides pink, I'm partial to greens and whites. And I love this paper so much that I decided to use it for National Scrapbook Day. But what happened was I ended up selling my <laughs> mini kit that I bought for myself by mistake. So I didn't have it to, to replicate the same card today. I've got some of the Serenity papers, but we're just going to have to um, be a little bit flexible with what I have at the moment. So the first card that we are going to do is this one. It is almost like, I just wanna see if I can see my comments. It's like a little pop out card. So when the person opens it, it, got, it has a little pop in the front. And with this, you can use any die cut any shape you can cut something by hand um, it's up to you I just use I love this one this was a die that I got from Heartfelt Creations from Mari at Purple Magnolia um, and I hadn't used it yet so I thought well why not and then we've got some detail on the front so my one is going to be slightly different to this because like I said I ran out of paper and um, so we're going to have to improvise with mine but there are notes in the albums um, so you should be able to follow with that as well okay so let me get my notes out so I know what I'm doing here I just called this the pop out tall card I didn't know what to call it so I'm starting off with a piece of white 250 gram card and this is a fairly um, heavy weight you can't do this on a flimsy card. Get my trimmer quickly. Because the flimsy card is just going to not hold itself up. It will fall over every time. And when you're giving someone a gift of a card, you don't want it to be top or bottom heavy so that it just flops over. It needs to hold its shape. So always work with 250 gram or heavier. So I'm going to cut my card. And now we're going to need our scoreboard because we're going to score. This is one of what I call my essential tools. If you don't have a scoreboard, you should save for one because whether you're making cards or albums, you need a scoreboard. So with a 10 inch side facing the top of your scoreboard, you're going to score on the following lines. So at the two and a half mark, at the four and a half mark, at the five and a half mark, and at the seven and a half mark. Does everybody have that? Hi Zelda and Anne, welcome. Are we all on the same page? Okay, then I'm going to score this. I mean, um, fold this and what's the word I'm looking for burnish so if you haven't scored or burnished anything before we always score towards the bubble you can't find me oh it's on the NSD page that's why you can't find me um, just traffic look for 2021 NSD traffic is trying to find me so he can watch sorry about that so we are folding and burnishing towards the bubble. Morning. I'll just turn this one around so it's easier for me to do it. Okay, and once you have that, you need the middle section to come forward. So that's what I've done. And then these two gets folded like that. Does that make sense? So then I'm going to burnish this really well so that the card front stays in place. And so now when you open it, that's what happens. Can I have a thumbs up to know that everybody's with me? Did 
Rita the beard is lost. Okay, Rita. And we just go through that one more time. So we've cut our page to seven inches. So it's seven inches like that, 10 inches across. And then with your 10 inch at the head of your scoreboard like that, you're scoring on two and a half, four and a half, five and a half, and seven and a half. Cindy? Centimeter scoring? I work in I work in inches. Let me see if I can transfer that to centimeters. So we're looking at about six and a half centimeters. 11 and a half uh, what is this 14 and 19 plus minus okay and then when you have that the two outsides fold in and the middle two fold outward Hi Judy, you're late. So are we all on the same page? This is what you want. And these your card, basically all you have to do now is to embellish it. So let me see what papers I have here. I have got so I had to make notes for myself <laughs> because I completely lost my, because I didn't have my, I didn't have my, my same pages. So I was a little bit lost. Okay. So I need to cut this to two and three eighths. So your sheet for the, um, for the right front. So for this piece, we're going to be cutting your pattern paper two and three eighths wide by six and seven eighths long okay so I'm first going to mark my two and three eighths piece I'm just cutting the strip off here and I specifically didn't prep anything so that we can do this together Oops. so I'm going to let me just turn this up down so I can get two and three eighths so two and three eighths is about six centimeters and what did I say the other measurement was six and seven eighths so I just need to pop my my board open here so I can get to the next measurement So six and seven eighths, which is about 17 and a half centimeters. And that's going to come there. Okay. Are we all on the same page? Then I'm going to be using the other side of the paper which is that side and that also has to be two and three eighths wide so two and three eighths which is about six centimeters and because I want let me just show you because I want that to go there let me see if it will look better there. No. I'm going to put it here. So I want it to go there. I need to chop off that section. So that will be 6 and 7 eighths again. Or 17 and a half centimeters. So we have the first two pieces. And you know what I do? Let me just show you. When I'm busy doing um, albums or cards and I'm not sure where if I want to stick something there permanently. So before I commit 
I take paper clips and I clip everything into place like that so I can see what that card will possibly look like or what the the album page or the layout will look like before I stick down and that helps me a lot because sometimes I chop and change things around afterwards if I if I see I don't like it so that's my one side done and then this I'm keeping for the inside of my other card. So I'm putting that away for later. So I hope you saw how I cut up the paper so that I got, I'm getting a lot more for my money than um, just, just snipping into it any old how. I've planned how I'm going to cut. Then we're going to cut the inside pieces and what I'm going to use for that one is so I had an off cut strip from from one of my other cards that I did and I kept that so this one measures 7 eighths now let me just see what is 7 eighths in centimeters quickly so I can translate it for you um, 7 eighths Ugh, now this is upside down where's my small rule where's my centimeter rule 7 eighths is um, about two and a half centimeters okay 7 eighths is about two and a half centimeters and it's the same length like the length of the other pieces which I said was 17 I think did I say it was 17? Let me measure. 17 and a half. 17 and a half centimeters. Okay. So we've got that there. And I see mine is a little skew. I'll fix it now in a minute. Okay. So that was an off cut. Then we need two pieces to go on the inside. And look, the, this is optional. If, you, if you're running low on, on pattern paper, you don't have to put anything here. In fact, you can stamp something in each corner, etc. And then you can use that section to write your message in your card. So, like I said, you don't have to... Because many of us don't have access to an extreme amount of, 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 of designer paper. We need to utilize our paper to the as efficiently as we can so if this is a card that you're gifting someone and it will open like that you can either use this piece here or this piece here to write your message in and then you can just leave it blank stamp some flowers maybe at the bottom or stamp um, a flourish in each corner or something along the edge that's all things that you can do to pretty it up without actually cutting into more paper I hope that makes sense so let me cut the strip off this one. Right, so this is going to be my inside panel, which I'm calling my inside panel, which is this piece. So it needs to be six and three quarter, which is our 17 and a half centimeters by one and three quarters, which is, let me check what it is in centimeters quickly. Uh, one and three quarter is about one and three quarter is about four and a half round about four and a half centimeters so see I said keep off cut for card two so I need to make notes for myself <laughs> otherwise I'll forget so I've got one and three quarters which is there six and seven eighths which is there and we need two of these we need two of those so another one I think I've got some glue on my cutting thing here it's sticky one and three quarters That would buy six and seven eighths. Okay. So I'm keeping this piece for my other card. 
I hope I remember where I put it actually because I'm famous for forgetting where I put stuff we lose it on our desks and that is going to go there Shafiq did you find us I wonder if Shafiq found us So that's going to go there and then we need two pieces for the outside and I used the smaller print on the on the um, the card pack but now because I didn't have it I had to revert to my bigger pack which is a bigger design um, but of course if you don't have this range you can always use any paper that you have so this one measures two and a quarter let's see what two and a quarter is in 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 centimeters it is about two and a quarter is about just over five and a half centimeters 5.7 centimeters by 17 and a half so where's my two and a quarter that's two and a quarter can't see so far. Two and a quarter is there. Okay. And it's six and seven eighths. Now I think on my first card I actually layered it onto something else, but um, I decided not to do the layering with this one because we can just ink the edges with with green ink and that will look like there is a like there's an extra layer six and seven eights. okay so can i see some comments are we all with us on the same page so that's gonna go there that's gonna go there just using the same so that's all where I'm placing everything that's the front of the card and then I just want to trim this piece straight because I see it's going a little bit skew and what I found is it's a whole lot easier for me to when I'm cutting thin strips like this is to actually use a ruler and a craft knife because it's so hard to get this straight in your in your what you call it in your um, in your trimmer so let me just see I've got a very bad glare on my ruler here. I can see it off Seven eighth inch line. So if you never use one of these Tim Holtz rulers, I always wondered what are all those lines for? And I figured it out eventually. So it's so that you can put the one line on your measurement. So I need um what was that measurement? Um seven eighths, I think it was. So that's the seven eighths line. And if I if you line that seven eighths line up with your straight edge, you can cut. So you can see it was a little bit off. And basically, basically that gives you the straight edge. And I learned that only recently. I'm such a dummy right so this is my centerpiece which is now straight and that's going to go there now before i glue i have already cut so what you will need for your middle piece is some sort of die cut i have already pre-cut mine because i didn't want you to still wait for me to cut something so i've pre-cut mine which will go there and then i've also pre-cut a piece of off cut so this will be dependent on the die cut that you're using and that's going to go on there so before we glue i i always edge everything you can 
just get my ink out. one but I used rustic wilderness no I lie I didn't use rustic wilderness I think I used um, the one that I can't find now so I'll just use rustic wilderness because I can't find the other one yeah. what's wrong bring it up okay The notes, the notes are on the, um, there's a file section on the NSD page. I have got notes up there. So just go on to, if you're on your phone, go to the top of the page and just scroll across. There's announcements, there's discussions, etc. You'll see the notes there. And then also if you're on a computer, I think it comes up on the, on the uh, left hand side of your page. So I'm just doing my my edges and I think I used um, a different green for my other card which has now simply disappeared we were speaking about that this morning how stuff just disappears on your desk and it happens to you especially when you're doing a live because you feel the pressure And the other green I use, I can't remember what it's called now. It was a much softer green, but this one's okay. I'm hoping you guys are crafting along with me today. That's what National Scrapbook Day is all about. And don't forget, I'm going to repeat the Stash Buster Challenges goes under your pictures that you're loading goes under the what is it called now under the announcement or under the post whereas the the challenges for every day now goes into the album that has the challenge number with a heart and if you're placing your things in the wrong place you're going to miss out so make sure you post in the right place, please. Right, where's my glue? So I'm just going to glue everything down. And hope I glue straight. I'm flipping my page so that I can see what I'm doing. And we have two hours. I hope it's enough to finish both cards because I can diddle daddle along with lots of things. I'm a procrastinator. And with this Tombow glue, I'm using Tombow glue, but if you're using Tombow glue, just remember less is more because it's one of those very very sticky glues and if it gets on your fingers and it gets on your cards it makes a huge mess um, you get black marks so it just looks untidy so I'd rather use less see I need to change my blade okay so this one was there that one was there did I say I'm gonna have it like that or like that okay let's go that way I don't know what I wanted to do so edging and since inks distress inks have come out I cannot layer anything without edging it I am yes yes the notes are available it is in the file section on the NSD page so if you go onto the page on the top of the page you will see 
files, announcements, discussions, etc. And the notes are under the files. It's already there. And you're welcome always to just message me if you have any questions. Oh no, I stuck it down the wrong way. I want it that way. Sorry, the butterfly would have been upside down. That's why I use glue and not double sided tape, people. That is why I use glue. Okay, the glue gives you a few minutes of reprieve. Lucky I caught it that time. Because very often I only see it like way after the fact, then it's too late. So when I do this inking, I'm using a very light hand and you can see that I'm using the oxides. Um, and oxides tend to be a little bit more creamy than the distress ink. So I have literally just inked up my, um, my tool a few times, not, not many, many times. Now, if this had to be on the front of one of my cards, I would have raised it slightly so that um, it has more dimension. But because it's going inside the card and this card needs to close, I'm going to just glue it down flat. But what do you think? We need a sentiment or something in there, eh? Oh, yes. I was going to use this for a sentiment. So this also comes out of the, um, this comes out of the mini pack from the Serenity range. And it's got such beautiful uh, quotes on here, so I'm going to use that. But before I do that, I would like to stamp something in the background, just so that it doesn't look so big. So, what do I have here? I think I use this. I use like um, a crackle stamp on my previous one, but you can also use something like a dot or... Sorry, I'm just grabbing a couple off my shelf. Or oh, something like that. There's dots in here. Ah, let's go for that one. I haven't used that for a while. And I'm going to choose a lighter ink because we just want something in the background. We don't want um, too much that it overpowers everything. Oops, sorry, I just knocked the camera there. So I'm just going to stamp a little piece there there we go and so there we go once we've got that on you see it's just like a barely there background it just gives it some little bit of extra texture and we can cut out some of these sentiments and put it on but let me first glue it or maybe I'll put the sentiment on the inside and and put those other little quotes on the front so there we go what do i have that i can put on there and i love stamps i've got a selection of stamps that has been ordered for over 20 years uh, <laughs> i started out as a stamper so i've got lots of stamps and the choice is immense so I'm just going to we're just going to put a little bit of glue in the center of that panel and glue that in and I'm just eyeballing it but if you want to be pedantic and you want to center it perfectly you can do so and then for the front let's see with my scissors um, let me just trim off some of these. I think I like the one live beautifully. Thank you, Priscilla. So sorry if I'm missing your comments. Um, it's very difficult to look up and check comments and and um, work at the same time. 
So I will try and respond after the class if you asked the question and I didn't get it. But my administrator, he comes up and down and he tells me when, when I'm missing something. Okay, now what I like to do is when I, even when it's a pre, um, a preset sentiment like this, I tend to cut them up. I cut up chipboard pieces as well to suit myself. So because I want this to run across the, the front of the card so that you can, when you're reading the card or when you're looking at the card, it draws your eye from the top down to the whole, to look at the whole card. So you enjoy the whole card. So I need one more quote. Um, I think Dream Passionately is also a nice one. So let's cut that one out. These scissors I got is supposed to be from Tim Holtz range haberdashery scissors, but I'm telling you they cut like a bomb. So sharp. So now we need to see how we are going to arrange this. I think look beautifully dream passionately and choose happiness does that sound nice look beautifully dream passionately and choose happiness so that's more or less where I'm going to put it I just feel I need to Burnish this a little bit so that the card is lying flat. That's where I'm going to put it, but I also, and this is purely optional, I had some extra stuff here. Here it is. So this was the off cuts of some of the other cards, and it matches up with that. So what you can do is if you want to add extra dimension, you can cut part of that out and layer it onto the, I'm not going to do it now because I don't want you to be watching me fussy cut. It's just not fun. So I will finish this off first and then I'll, I'll do the fussy cutting afterwards and um, I'll post a picture of the card if I do decide to use it. So we shall edge and what I do is you see how that is short because I trimmed it and it looks very awkward or unbalanced so I will trim it off on both sides so that it looks more balanced so look beautifully yes Shafi Yes, the video. I will save the video on the page so you will be able to come back afterwards and view um, the repeat. Hello from Sweden. Wow, that's awesome. It's minus 10 degrees. Yes, you can watch the beginning later, Caroline. We will be saving it on this page. So um, it will be there for you to watch afterwards. Okay. Now, because I also feel that everything is so flat on this card at the moment, I want to raise some of the sentiments now so that it looks a little bit better. Um, and then, of course, what you can do when this is all done, you can tie it with a ribbon, a bow to close it and make it more fancy. Or you can uh, make a, um, a cardboard closure that will slide up and down. That's just options that you have. So, I am going to just add some foam tape to my, my sentiment. And how I do a lot of my things is I use various widths of foam tape. So this is the thinnest one I have, which is about that thick. And then for, for the beautifully, I'm going to use the one size up, which 
is a little bit thicker so then it just gives my card some dimension and you know I stand when I do this thing Let's see, so we're going to do that there. Yes, beautifully. Dream passionately. always amaze myself when I cut a piece with an eyeball it and it fits perfectly then I do like a little happy dance here on my own <laughs> the small things that make me happy hello girl welcome Another question? Just to say, been oh, hi, you've been mentioned. Who's who's mentioning you? <laughs> I think everybody knows the administrator by now. <laughs> no, let's go. No, I don't like it there. See, now I think I put the dream on the wrong place, but it's. Uh, can I take it off? Yes, so let me see. I'm fussy like this, eh? Still not right in my eyes. Okay. Nah, I'll, I'll just have to settle for that. Choose happiness. I'll have to settle. I want a thick one for that. not happy with that one will not believe how many times I do this on something yes oh I have a YouTube channel um, just look for Sharmila Hendrix S H A M E L A I also have a tutorials page on Facebook which is Kanya crafts tutorials and I will put it in the description box um, so you can follow it up afterwards or I can ask any of the ladies who follow me on my tutorials page to just please share the link if you know how um, we meet every Wednesday at 8 30 p.m. and at the moment we are busy doing my exploding house if you haven't seen that it's a house with an album Check it out on my, still not happy with this one. Check it out on my YouTube channel and you're welcome to join us. It's a free class. Uh, I'm going to put my, my red backing back on so I can, I'm not happy with that. My eyes are telling me it doesn't work. So let me figure that out before I just stick, stick, stick everywhere. Is that better? I will. I'll post it, Wendy. Thank you so much. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, I think I like that one better. Okay, so Dream is going to go. <laughs> I don't know how many times I change this now. Eh? Comet, comet, Charmina. Just comet now do it right that's it I'm not moving it again so what I also like to do because we import the Stamperia products and this is called sparkling white glamour gel it is number K3P59B and it's one of my absolute favorite stuff to use because I like shimmer and I 
got a tiny brush here and this is a water-based product so all you do is you dip it into the brush and you can add some detail to your card am i in shot let me make sure i'm in shot and it that it gives you this barely there little extra pizzazz that makes your card a little bit more special and can you see it does it come up oh cool yes thank you Sharon and you can use this as a background on things I've seen people paint with it it is absolutely awesome and a little jar like this goes a long way Yes, Shafri? So this comes in like a green and a, oh, actually I have it here. It comes in green. It comes in blue. The blue is amazing. The white is the most versatile I feel because you can actually, because it's translucent, it's water based, your color still shows through. And um, we have sold a tremendous amount of these little jars. And I can tell you, I think most people who have bought it are extremely happy with what they've got. Yep. Oh, you can get it from myself. Um, I'm in Cape Town. We also have some shops up in Joburg and um, KwaZulu Natal, Muscle Bay that sell this Tamperia product. Um, just speak to your local store and see if they have it. If not, you can get it from either Karen Smith at the Scrapbook, Francis Boerta at Postnet Crafts in Cape Town, or from me, Tanya Crafts in, um, in Cape Town. But we are happy to ship to you. We use the Courier Guy. Um, but all Stamperia stuff and if you check out the Stamperia website you will see there is an amazing new launch happening at the end of March we are currently taking pre-orders for it such such beautiful things coming soon and we order regularly from Stamperia just so that you guys can have the latest things on hand because then we are up to date with the rest of the world. I did mention Karen and Francis. <laughs> I'm just getting a reminder, Karen, that I mustn't forget about you and Francis. There we go. So that's the first card done. And how long have we been on? I'm not sure. Are we making good time? And what you can do as well is you can add something like glossy accents um, or this is extra gloss finish from uh, Stamperia, a stunning product as well. What I like about it is it is self leveling. So, but like Belinda said in our live the other day, your base has to be straight. So my base is a little bit not straight. So what I'm going to do is um, if I put some of this on here I will let it dry and hopefully by the time we finish our second card it will be dry so you can see what it looks like um, but I'm gonna peg this together so that it doesn't it doesn't lean to the side because I, th I think this is a little bit thicker than glossy accents is and because it self levels you don't get that um, that bubbles in it oh I'll show it now okay I'm just putting a paper clip there so that lays flat and then we'll put this one to one side and I'll clear my desk a little bit because it's looking messy and then at the end of the class I'll show you if it's dry 
okay so let me just show you the the glamour gel again this is the sparkling white you can see mine is really well used i use it all the time it is the k3p59b and this little jar retails for 165 rand but you can see you use very little of it in fact i shared this jar with francis and cardins because we needed to show our clients how to use it and what it does so that's why mine is so depleted but it's because we shared it then it comes in the blue this is called star blue and look at that color it's blue with a shimmer of gold in it it is fabulous where's my card i made with belinda and i can show you where is it? ah i see it one minute So this is the card I did on the Stamperia Live the other day. You can see here I used the, um, the, what's that called? The extra gloss finish. Memories, memories, so bad. Put a little bit there. And then if you look at the trees in the background, I just took a brush and I stippled some of the, um, the green, which is the nature green. Oh. It is a yummy it looks so good so that one I used on the trees and then in the background let me just drop this you can see on the clouds there I use the white and then on the front of the card Stamperia has what they call the um, the glamour sparkles and it's actually pieces of real glass it's glitter it is so gorgeous i have it in blue here that's what the blue looks like and i think the white has to be my favorite because it's translucent and it's 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 nice big chunks of glitter so you can even mix it with your other glitters just to give it some extra dimension and sparkle and then i also added it to the supervisor here and i added it to her dress and I didn't put a lot on because you don't want to detract from the actual uh, um, designer paper because this paper is so stunning. But just put a little bit here. Oh, and then I added some to a neckline and a jacket. So it just makes it a little bit more interesting. So, ladies, did you like the first card we did? 